Welcome to the Hoodoo and Chill Podcast, the number one hoodoo and spirituality-based podcast bringing awareness to African-American spirituality in a wide range of thought-provoking topics. I am Papa Seer, your host, your narrator, and your storyteller. Before the show begins, make sure you're subscribed or following the show so you don't miss out on any episodes. And as always, donations of love keep our podcast alive and give us the ability to upgrade the show, enhance our content, and most importantly, do what we love. You can use any link in the description to send your donation of love today. Now, let's start the show. Good morning and grand rising. We are here with another episode of the Hoodoo and Chill Podcast Live. It is me, Papa Seer, your host, your narrator, and your storyteller of the number one hoodoo and spirituality-based podcast in the globe. That's awesome. And that's only because of you all, the listeners, the supporters, everyone who has made this journey what it is i'm so excited to be here it is monday magic mondays we have not been doing magic mondays as regularly as i would like to i think we probably should get back to that but i'm so happy to be here on the mic today per the request of my spiritual family per the request of my god children um it's been made me i've been made very aware that people miss magic mondays so i'm i'm happy to be here today I also um, just want to say, too, for those of you all that are here in the audience, I am going to open up the floor towards the end of the podcast. If you want to come up, share a comment, a thought on today's message. I don't normally do this, so I would say that towards the end of the show, I will open up the floor. If you want to come up, if you want to be on today's episode, we are recording and you will have an opportunity to have your voice heard across the world once we upload this episode to our top rated podcast on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else that you get your podcast. Shout out to uh, iTunes Radio. Shout out to iHeartRadio as well as Audible. We have been, our podcast has been, you know, uploaded to iHeartRadio as well as Audible. And it's been doing great over there. So shout out to our Audible and iHeartRadio family as well. Now, today's episode. What are we going to talk about today? Is Papa on one today? I might be just slightly, but in a good way. And before I even get into the meat or the bulk of my message today, I want to just give a, I want to dedicate this show with a lot of gratitude, a lot of grace and a lot of thanks. And I'm taking me out of the equation. This is not about me today so much, but I dedicate this show to true students, true students true students of the occult, true students of the Hoodoo Conjuru work pantheon, I open up the floor today in dedication of this podcast to you all. And the reason why I do that is because specifically as it relates to Hoodoo, as you all know, today's podcast is called the Hoodoo Handout. There is a major misconception And as large as I would like to think the podcast is or as as much impact as I believe the podcast has, there is still a lot of misconception about you all as students, teachers, mamas, papas, and holders of this tradition. There's a misconception about you. People oftentimes feel like what you do is easy. I've heard that word being tossed around a lot, easy. People think a lot of what you're doing can be found in a book. People seem to believe that what you're doing has no discipline. There's no doctrine. You know, that's just folk magic. And we've had that talk before. But there is still an attitude of bastardization of what you're doing and what you have dedicated and integrated your life into. Today, right now, I'm speaking to those of you who are standing before me in spirit those of you that are here with me live today 
that are authentic and true to the calling. My heart goes out to you. I stand with you. I love you. And I dedicate today's message to you because people need to understand that just as well as any other tradition, any other pantheon of spirituality, magic, occulticism, what have you, that the hoodoo adept, the hoodoo student, the hoodoo teacher, mama, papa, the worker, the practitioner, whatever you decide to call yourself, that these are also students of knowledge, that these are also students who hold a lot of of authenticity these are students from my experience the hoodoo student these you all come into this with your hearts open willing and ready to help ready to do the self work or the inner work as well I mean and then the amount of what you have to learn because there there, even those of you who've taken one year a full year of classes with me at the end of the year you're still like man I still have so much to go back and we still have so much to cover there's so much to this that I don't feel like people understand how much of these people's time and sacrifice that they really put into this their money you know I'm a single man So, you know, technically, in the grand scheme of things, I really only need, you know, maybe a one bedroom, you know, to take care of myself. And there's many of you that are are, are single as well, too. But I just said this this morning. I said people don't even realize that these practitioners, once they invite spirit into their home and their relationship grows, their rent just went up. Their mortgage just went up. Because now they now have to dedicate a whole room, a whole space in their home for spirits. Sit with that for just a second. Most of you don't even want to let a person in your family come stay two weeks with you. Let alone dedicate an entire room or space to someone that you share the same blood with, right? But these students, these teachers, these adepts, these acolytes, they've set aside whole spaces, rooms. I've seen entire garages, basements dedicated to their work and to their spirits. And will pay that rent, pay that mortgage faithfully. And anytime they move, if they have to move, they have to have that same amount of space, if not more. So the image that you have of us just kitchen witching, as some of you like to call it, or we got all of our stuff in a closet tucked away somewhere or in a little box under the bed, that's not the truth. That's not the case. We have whole entire rooms, wings of our homes, basements, attics, many of spaces in our homes dedicated to our spirits, just like any other pantheon that you may see sometimes more for those of you that type in with the spirit guides but that's a whole nother conversation but it walks me into my message today because there's an attitude that some of you still walk with and I'm I'm, I'm trying my best to help correct it or at least make you aware of it right this attitude of give me Gimme, 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 I won't, 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 I need, 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 can I have, have, have that song that I love to sing, that that song, I don't love to sing, but that song that many people like to sing. Can I get, 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 I won't, I need, put it in my hand. And it's this reason, and right now I'm talking to my teachers, or those of you who plan on teaching or mentoring in the future, it is this reason why you have to be meticulous and weed out who you are going to train and who you are not. Now, I can be open with you all today. Have I made mistakes and trained people because, what, I was in a financial bond? I might have needed the money and needed the income? Yes, we have all been in that space before where you may have had to step outside of yourself to do something or put something in somebody's hand or even do some work that you really didn't want to do to keep the lights on. I've been there. 
I'm not talking about that right now. Because what's going to happen is you're going to grow from that. You are going to grow from that. Hear me when I tell you, you're going to elevate from that. You are going to become more mature in your practice and in your work. Hear me today. And it's not so much going to be about keeping the lights on because spirit is going to overflow your life with abundance if you're doing it the right way. That's not going to be, it's not going to be an issue for you anymore. Money's not an issue in my life. Glory to God, glory to my spirits. What you're going to start finding was more important to you is the legacy that you're leaving behind and who exactly that you are putting this work, this knowledge into the hands of. Because I'm going to tell you, people in when it comes to the hoodoo pantheon, they have a very good habit and a very bad habit of coming in, taking what they need, and then they're out the door. I say this, I stand on this. People may not like me for saying this. Not here to make people like me. There is a one person. This is a one person practice. This is a one person practice. Only one percent of you probably actually had someone in your life, a grandmother, father, or someone who actually touched hoodoo. About one percent of you. Then only about one percent of you are actually here for the right reasons. And then there's only 1% of you who probably will stick with this until this over. And when I say it's over, I mean when your life is over. When this incarnation has come to its halt. This is a 1% practice. There are many who will say they have hoodooed. There were many who will walk around and say that they lit candles, they did this, and they did nothing. This is a 1% practice. The Hoodoo and Chill Podcast will return after this short ad break. Why make another major decision without knowing the outcome beforehand? Would you like to know where your relationship is headed or what the future holds in store for you? My name is Papa Seer and I want to assist you in making all the right decisions so that you, yes you, may live your best life. Are you seeking a new career? Does your love life need insight? Or maybe you want to connect with your ancestors or past loved ones. The realm of divination holds all the answers to your fortune. Allow me to use some of my abilities, bone reading, cardamancy, tarot, and mediumship to uncover the answers to your future. Go to hoodooconjurerootwork.com under classes and services to book your appointment today. Your spirit guides are waiting to speak with you. That's hoodooconjurerootwork.com to uncover your destiny today. And what I find is that when you are a teacher, you have to start weeding out where you are going to leave your legacy and who is going to hold on to your work. Because when you pour into people, They walk away with pieces of you. But essentially, they walk away with pieces of not only you, your ancestors, because where do you get your magic from? So what you have to start doing is cultivating the mind of protection. I hate to even use this word, but gatekeeping, because you are not just protecting the knowledge that you withhold, but you are protecting the knowledge that your spirit guides, your ancestors, your angels, and so on and so forth have poured into you. That's why I'm heavy on my students about if I teach you something, do not run out here and share it with somebody else because now you're giving away handouts. What we're here to talk about today. If they are not here in this room with you learning this information, if they didn't take the time to learn it, if they didn't take the time to pay for this class or whatever was required for you to be here, then guess what? It's not for them. Some of you have put information in people's hands, including myself, that didn't deserve it, didn't need it. And then you're responsible for the outcome of that. Because how did they get that information if they didn't get it from you? Hoodoo and Chill Podcast will return after this short ad break. There's a sacrifice that comes with this. And at the end of the day, we're given the choice of how we want to sacrifice and what we're sacrificing for. 
and whether or not what we're sacrificing for is actually what we're supposed to be sacrificing for. Are we choosing the right path when we accept this proposal that has this bag attached to it? Are we doing that? You all have to protect this because one of the first handouts people are going to walk into the door with from you, from you. And this is any level. I don't care if you are a two day student, a 20 year student. The first thing that people are going to want from you is the handout of solutions and magic. Let's start with solution. The first one is hand me the solution to my problem, right? Fix it. I mean, it's no secret that we as hoodoo conjurers and root workers, we have a, a reputation of fixing things. But people walk into the door and they don't want to do any internal work within themselves. They don't want to go to therapy. They don't want to go to relationship counseling. They don't want to do the internal work. They don't want to cry for their inner child. They don't want to cry for their ancestors. They want a solution. They want to fix it. They want to give it to me now. And the thing about spell work, is that it works. It will manipulate. It will change or fix something in the moment. But if it is not in the space of divine ritual that has been grounded, solidified in the earth, and this thing is not going anywhere, it will wear off. The effects of the work, it can wear off. So whereas this person may have fixed an issue in your life, the internal conflict, the flame of internal conflict still burns. So you're going to find yourself right back at the premises of this issue again. It just may materialize in a different way. So if you're looking for a handout to fix your problem, I'm going to, you're going to be greatly disappointed because it's going to fix something, but you're going to turn around and still look back on your life and realize that everything is still wrong. The only time when the solution is a real solution that fixes it and it's everlasting is when you have done your internal work. As I always say, what you got to do up there has to be done. What goes up must come down. What is done above is so below, period. So if you put prosperity into the air, go out into the world and be prosperous. If you put healing into the air, heal thyself. Open up your own doors of healing. Go to spaces and places and put yourself amongst the right professionals where you can be healed. Magic. That's a big one. I mean, I think that's, you know, a lot of, of the occult fad is the reason why this is such a handout because people think people have a Sabrina the witch mentality when it comes to magic and they want to spark shooting out of their hands and ass and everything else. But that's not how magic works. Well, at least not what we do, not ritual magic anyway. It's patient. It's like a process. It is a reservoir of power that you continue to feed and it builds up and then it is able to materialize. It's not instantaneous the majority of the time. But even then, too, there's the spell collector mentality. You met your mentor, what, three days ago? And now it's day four and you want to learn how to do this and this and give me, give me, give me, give me. And you feel like they should be teaching you more. Let me tell you one of the biggest turnoffs for me when people come ask me to mentor them. When they come to me and they talk junk about the mentor that they currently have or somebody that they came from. I'm probably not going to take you on as a student. I'm going to be honest with you. Because... To be honest with you, no mentor, no student, no mama, pop, or godparent is perfect. And even if you had the worst mentor in the world, and I've been under some bad ones, believe you me, but I still would never bash them openly to another practitioner. You breaking code. You don't even have no loyalty to them. Because I guarantee you, whereas they may not be a good person, they may have been horrible to you. They taught you something. You walked away with something. 
They still put something in your hands. You were still in a place where they were in authority over you. So if you don't have any of the slightest a bit of loyalty from what you came from, you're definitely going to, you're not going to bring me any. So when people come to me and I, and they start bad talking somebody that they came from, and unless it's something serious, you know, like something, um, abuse or something like that, right? That's something different. But I'm talking about when y'all come talking to me about, well, I won't learn nothing. They didn't teach me nothing. I wanted to learn this and I didn't agree with this and da 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 and, and, and they and they worried about my power and I'm I'm stronger than them and, and they they jealous of me. How is somebody that's teaching you jealous of you? Ego. That's a red flag. See, the real issue was, and I bet you if I go talk to that mentor, you didn't want to do the work. You didn't want to do what they laid out before you because there's everyone that you learn from is going to have their own set of rules, their own set of guidelines. And I hate to bust your bubble. We're not going to change it for you. Papa Seer is not going to change his method for you. I am not going to change my method to match your problems, what's going on with you in your life. You are coming to me to learn something that I already know how to do. So why would I change up what I'm doing to teach you something? None of you walk into a college classroom where you didn't pay $30,000 a year and look at your teacher and say, I need you to teach it like this. You ain't doing it right. You sit down, you be quiet, you do the work and hope to God that you walk out of there in four years with a degree. Why do you all not show your mentors, your teachers, your godparents, the same respect. See, that's the first problem that we have in this. We don't even respect the people who've already done the time and work to learn something you're trying to learn. Business. Business. For those of you out here that have a business, podcast, any type of platform, protect it. Protect it. With all costs protected, stop telling people how you got successful. Stop having conversations with people for free. That is called a consultation because I'm going to tell you one thing about my life. There's not a day that goes by that somebody does not ask me, how did you start a podcast? How did you get paid for that? When I was giving out classes on how to do it for free, you weren't there. Now that it's successful, give me your business, how you did that. The worst thing that some of you all are going to have to watch out for is some of those people that come sit under you claiming that they want to be your mentee, your godchild, your student, whatever. They are watching your business, watching how you move so that they can take what they need and go out here and open up their own practice. I can't tell you how many people that I've met on a Monday and by Friday they had a podcast. (laughs) <laughs> I can't tell you and it never fails I cannot tell you how many people I met on Monday and by Friday they had a podcast so I'm telling you now be mindful of that too because at the end of the day Huru and Conjure as Brother Cosmic once said to me he said people need to understand that con- there is still a business of Conjure and I could have raised up out of my seat and started jumping up for Joe. That, that is one of my brothers, man. I, I love Cosmic. And he, he said it so eloquently that there is still a business of conjure. And once upon a time, and even today, it puts food on people's tables. It pays the bills. This is how we live. We don't get a check. So if you cannot respect the fact that some for some people that outside of their spirituality that this is a business too you coming in with the wrong attitude and just because you have a business idea just because you're a good car reader just because you're ready to go out here and start your hoodoo practice does not mean that these clients are going to come running to you just because you posted something on instagram i have done readings for five dollars i have done them for free I have worked my butt off and and I still am. And there are a lot of people just like me or in doing a lot more work than me who have worked, put in time, 
effort, saved up, did what they needed to do to open up that Botanica, to have that successful podcast, to put out that card deck, to have a successful book. These people put in time for this. That's why, you know what, I don't care how much people disagree with Hyatt Middleton or even the other one who I'm not going to name. If they put the time in to put the material out, we have to respect it. It's still a business. Just like you want somebody to respect your business. Just like we want you to be successful. And just like we want somebody to respect your craft and what you put out to the world. I think another handout is knowledge. And Knowledge is not something that you can hand out, unfortunately. It's not. It's not. I mean, we can teach you some things. I can and I can tell you some knowledgeable things. But to be honest with you, real knowledge and wisdom comes through experience. I can tell you some very wise things. But you need to experience them for you to be able to translate that and transmute that into your own internal. It has to make sense to you. And... The thing is, is that we can't hand that to you. We can impart wisdom into you. We can tell you some things. Your godparents love you and they're going to coach you. They're going to be there for you. Your mentor is definitely going to train you in the way that you should go. But you have to go out into this world and experience. You cannot sit in the house. You can't be scared to do the work. You can't be scared of your altar and your ancestors. You can't be scared. You have to go out there and forge your own experiences. One of my godchildren I'm so proud of because I don't get the opportunity to train him one-on-one like I would like to, like I can with my daughters and stuff like that because his schedule, my schedule, just it conflicts all the time. But when I do get an opportunity to talk to him, you know, we, we, we're we good. And I respect him so much because he is one of, I always call him like, you, you, you're just such a true hoodoo because he going for it his own way. You know, it, it, he will find a way and go look for it or wait for spirit to minister to him. And I said, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Don't sit and wait on me to teach you every single thing. Go out here and learn some things for yourself. If you all think that my godparents and my mentors taught me everything, you, you guess again. I love you all. For those of you all that are listening, I love you all, but you all know the truth too. I, I, I study a lot. I've done a lot of my own research, done a lot of my own experiences my own trial and error, my own mistakes. You know, that's another thing too. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know, I mean, you you are going to make some mistakes in this. You can, you're only going to get better through the mistakes that you make. So don't expect to have a perfect run as a practitioner. You're not. You have to make a mistake to say, you know what, baby, don't do that like that because this is what's going to happen. And then you can save somebody else. So don't expect your mentors or your godparents to go out here and who do for you. Get your own hands dirty. Because just like I tell my god kids, I'm not cutting the chicken head off for you. I'm not doing the work for you. You're going to put your pants on. You're going to put your big girl pants on. And you're going to do your work today. Come on. Let me show you how to do it. But you're going to do this. And to my teachers and my mentors, I will hope that you all are the same way with your godchildren and your students. Stop holding their hands. You're crippling them. You are crippling them. They have to be able to fight. They have to know that you are there to protect them and guide them. But you need godchildren and students that can stand on their own two feet. Stop crippling them. And Spirit just put that on my heart to say to us too. Yes, we we need to stop holding y'all hands so much, and you know, and and probably teach a little bit more too. You know, some of y'all are withholding knowledge that your students and your godchildren need. So spend more time with them. Spirit put that on my heart to say today. My big one for this is family. Family. And I'm so happy that the hoodoo houses and the families are returning. I'm so happy to see that there is organization coming back to what we're doing. And I've spoken on this before. I have spoken on this before and on this podcast. But for those of you that are new to families or joining organizations and stuff like that, 
Think about what you're bringing into that door of that family. Because I, the, the thing that I see is you all walk into the space and you want people to mold to you. Well, I'm introverted. I don't talk to people. And then you sit around us for four months not talking to anybody. And then you say, I'm leaving because I don't feel like I have a family. You don't, you don't talk to us. This, they're, they're feeling like you don't like them just as much as you feel like, like we don't like you. You don't talk. You don't show up. When you go into a spiritual family, don't bring yourself. Please do not bring your material body. I mean, you have to bring it in the physical, but we would prefer if you bring your spirit form. That's who we want. That's why it's called a spiritual family. We don't want what you do on the regular earth. We don't want the introverted person that's going to sit in the corner and not talk to us. We want your spirit form, lively, open, vibrant, who's ready to learn, ready to engage, and ready to be of substance and add something to this space. Please leave that at the door because that's not what we're here for. We are here to learn and grow with your spirit form. That's why it's called a spiritual family because we are here to nurture your spirit form. If you need therapy, if you need counseling, if you need group therapy, you need to go to a professional. That is not what your spiritual family is for. And some of you all need to start micromanaging who is bringing that energy into your spiritual families. Because what I'm seeing happening is that we are getting so focused on people's personal problems and their personal mental health that we're not learning what we came here to learn. If we came here to learn hoodoo, conjure, and root work, and this is the family, this is the bond that we are forging, that is where the focus should be. You are an adult and your mental health, your personal problems, whereas we will be there as a rock for you and support for you, it's not your spiritual family's job to fix those issues. Here we go back to what I said in the beginning. You don't want to do your internal work. You can't run from what you have to do for yourself and then come over to our spiritual family or wherever these collective spaces are and dump and think that, oh, you're going to get healed and fixed in that manner. Only thing that you are doing is toxifying the space. Why not do the internal work that is required of you so that when you come to your spiritual family, you can be a resource of healing. You can share with us your journey of therapy. You can share with us your journey of healing. You can give us tips and help your brother or sister who may be in the same predicament as you once were in. Instead of dumping your problems and saying, fix it. I thought we were here to help you learn and grow in your spirituality. And there's a space for everything. You know, I say this much as today with love, not to ostracize anyone from this. But it's to weed out those who intend on toxifying the space of hoodoo, the name of hoodoo, the, the mentors, The people that are really out here doing the work and have dedicated a lot of time and effort into this, this is to help weed you all out so that we can be left with what is supposed to be here, you know, guiding light. Because at the end of the day, we're evolving this thing. We are evolving this thing. We are standing together and we are transforming this and making our ancestors proud. That's one thing I can definitely stand on. I know the ancestors are looking at us and they are proud of us. It may not be perfect. It may not be where it should be. But you know what? We are standing together and doing what they sung about. What was it? Lift every voice and sing. We're doing that. We're standing together. We're keeping the work alive. We're keeping their legacies alive. And most importantly, we are building our own. For those of you that are authentic to this, for those of you that are here for all of the right reasons, I'm on your team. And you have an advocate in me and a supporter in me. I don't say these messages to tear anyone down, but to lift us up and to strengthen us as a community because we need it. 
for you to be more aware of the people that probably don't need to be in your space. Because you know what? There is absolutely nothing wrong with eliminating a weed that doesn't that does not need to be there. We need to be more proud about protecting our spaces and protecting our work and our knowledge because my people, you all have put too much into this for it not to be respected. You have put too much time, too much money, and too much sacrifice of the self. Do you hear me? For it not to be respected for you and your ancestors and your legacies not to be respected. I'm going to land here. On a plane of love, I am going to open up the floor for a moment if anyone has a comment, question they want to have and add to the show today. Um, First, I just want to say how amazing this message was. Um, You hit everything on the nail. And um, all I'm going to add to this is expect nothing, receive everything. And what I mean by that is expect nothing to be given to you. In any space you go into, you must earn your right. But receive everything. Receive everything on what to do and what not to do. Be a true student. Be an empty vessel. You are a blank canvas when you come into this space, especially the space that you're unfamiliar with. So I say all that to say thank you, Papa Seer, for this message and being a true leader of this occultism to uh, the Hoodoo Conjure Root Work movement and to just being an amazing teacher, mentor, and spiritist. Karen, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I gotta, um, me and you need to do an episode. I need to bring you on the podcast. Seriously, you are. That is Karen, one of, um, the leaders, one of my council members of our family. She is truly amazing. I really need to bring her on the podcast so you all can hear her story. It is amazing and she is amazing. And, um, thank you for being gold, golden. You are truly one of the standards of what we push out in our group and, um, to all of you all and, our space. You all know I love you all and my students. You all, I think you all are the best personally. I really do. Um, I would just like to say that um out of like most of like the leaders like I follow within the community, you're like probably one of the only ones that I know that is not afraid to talk about real topics when it comes to hoodoo and, you know, any type of working or conjure work. And Sometimes even when you see you talking about those topics, like it's just it's just so much shit that you wake up with your voice. Like your voice is just very, very strong. Like you don't realize how much it's created not only a ripple in in my life, but a ripple in other people's lives. Just hearing you talk and hearing you wake up a lot of things with the community that most people are not willing to talk about. Number one, because the topic might either be controversial or because, you know, I guess there's, in a sense, a type of energy that they're trying to have in their own space. But you bring the type of transparency that I feel like everybody in this type of community needs. The type of, not only the type of of transparency, but the structure. So thank you for that. Thank you so much, Dylan, for coming up. And you all, that is uh, Reads by Dill on Instagram. Make sure you all follow him. He is also affiliated with ACR and a young, upcoming, very talented reader. I have known him for a long time. So um, I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much for just coming up and sharing your words. Thank you all for your support. Um, you know, this this ministry, this podcast is growing exponentially. And it's only because of the support. We've been doing this for a long time. So that's why I will always come back to these clubhouse streets and drop some knowledge podcast here because this is where we started and at the end of the day clubhouse will always be home for us because this is where we started so you all um i'm gonna end here you know and just wish everybody the best on this monday you know as always i send you out in love light peace prosperity most importantly protection it is monday you all protect your monday change your attitude today i don't know who i'm talking to but change your attitudes about today go to work do what you gotta do 
even if you got to go in a little bit late just to take care of your mental health and get yourself together but do what you got to do set the tone for your monday this is going to dictate the rest of the week and i want you all to be prosperous i want you to make some money i want you to be successful in whatever it is that you have planned for this week and most importantly i want you to have a peaceful week okay don't let anybody shift your energy today or any day this week stay grounded stay balanced my people remember that you come from the best of the best your ancestors were the best of the best i bless your hands your coming you're going may the things you touch materialize as if it was gold right in front of your face my people and with that i release you into the atmosphere thank you all Thanks for listening to the Hoodoo and Chill podcast. Be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating and let us know how much you enjoyed the show. As always, donations of love keep our podcast alive and give us the ability to enhance our content. Please use one of the donation links in the description to send a donation of love today. And we'll see you on the next episode of Hoodoo and Chill.